Hey guys, it's Late Night Retro. Been a lack of videos lately as I've not been playing many old school games. However, one weekend afternoon I was feeling a bit fat and sassy. Where to turn from there? What to play? As I looked around, I came across a Japan exclusive for the Super Famicom called Ghost Sweeper Mikami, Jorisha Wa Nice Body. Ghost Sweeper Mikami was a comedic horror manga series that ran in the magazine Weekly Shonen Sunday from 1991 to 1999. The magazine is published in Japan and it's a collection of different mangas that are released weekly. The very first issue was 58 years ago. I must admit, I'm not a weeb and this stuff is very far out to me, but I gotta say, I had no idea that manga and such was around for so long. But I guess I can't be too surprised, I suppose it's like comic books here in the states. Now Ghost Sweeper was very popular, even winning the Shogakukan Manga Award, which in Japan is a major manga award and has been presented annually since 1955 to astounding publishers. Ghost Sweeper Mikami was adapted as a 45 episode series for TV in 1993. The anime eventually led to a movie, which is the only existence of this manga in the United States. Released exclusively for the Super Famicom in 1993, Ghost Sweeper at its core is an action game with some stages that sprinkle in some platforming. Developed by Natsumi and published by Banalex. By now we know about Natsumi as I've played nearly every single game they made and reviewed most of them. I have an unwavering love for the games they made in the NES, SNES era. Now Banalex only published games in Japan and only had published two. This and another game that was released for the Game Boy based on another manga, Crayon Shinchan. Now as I told you, this was only released in Japan and there's been no translations of it. One was supposedly in the works around 2010, but nothing became of it. So its story and dialogue is a mystery to me, along with the characters, as I've never read the manga or seen the anime. How the game starts out is a statue is delivered to Raiko, who is the main character, a sassy and spunky chick wearing a tight short mini skirt. Ooh la la. <laughs> The statue has a magical presence about it, and contains gem slots, which become the objective of the game. You will venture through seven levels, a boss on each to collect gems for the statue. Once the gems are collected and placed in the statue, a final boss spawns, and the final battle begins. The controls are basic and feel tight for some feel-good slashing. Raiko is armed with a baton and 5 hit points. You have an up attack which makes enemies in the air easier to take down, and a standard slash you can use while jumping or for enemies on the ground. Throughout the levels you encounter jars, by slashing them open you're able to uncover a cake that will refill a hit point, different power scrolls which act as a special ability, and a few different upgrades to your baton giving it more range. Beware though, when you get hit once, you will lose the powered up baton and go back to the default attack. Cherish it. You gotta cherish it. You really do. Stage 1 opens up with a kind of Final Fight feel to it along with some gritty almost Sega Genesis sounding music. Off the bat it gives you a kind of beat em up feel like a Streets of Rage turned hack and slash. You are battling through the streets and eventually board a substation. This is a very basic level with forward progression while battling the ghouls that lurk around every corner. I noticed in this level there were wooden platforms with paper hanging from them. At the time I didn't know you could latch onto them and boost yourself up. Often these platforms will lead you to jars containing extra lives or power ups. Now after stage 1 the game ramps up a bit in terms of difficulty and stage design. The enemies get more in your face and make your reactions count. You will encounter more scaling and platforming instead of the normal horizontal gameplay. Throughout the 7 levels, the game sprinkles in two auto-scrollers, which aren't my favorite thing, but the game keeps them fast paced so I approach them less grudgingly. In fact the second auto-scroller is really short, but involves a longer in the air boss fight, which I welcome. Now speaking of the boss fights, they aren't too bad, some are very easy and then there are some that will keep you on your toes. Each fight introduces new mechanics and you might find yourself having to battle them more than once due to a death. Same goes for the enemies too, some you can just slash through and it will be a breeze, but then there are some you won't be able to kill but only stun, others will explode into projectiles causing you to have to avoid them with the other dangers already lurking around. 
The game starts very easy, but towards the end, it really ramps up. It doesn't take you by surprise, but progresses rather well. You get two lives per continue, and continues are unlimited, with an opportunity to find more lives on some stages. The game is short, and doesn't take more than one sitting to beat, which was welcoming to me, as I went through a lot of tough longer games before sitting down to play this. It does have a password system if you'd like to continue from a certain level, but it shouldn't take you more than one or two hours to beat. The music in Ghost Sweeper Mikami is good, but nothing super exciting like the jamming music from Dragon Fighter in my last review. This game won't blow you away or leave you saying, wow, amazing! But I gotta say all around it's an enjoyable experience, even not being able to read the dialogue. It's fast paced and you won't sink a lot of time into it. If you're a fan of the manga, it'll bring the enjoyability up a notch for sure. I would say if you got an hour or two and are looking for something to play, check this out. It's highly playable. This has been Late Night Retro. Thank you for watching. Until next time.